Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm Take 2. I'm Christy. Today in the chapel we have 1 Thessalonians 5.16. Rejoice always. So, still trying to be positive and seek God. And so, yeah, actively doing that and just rejoicing in the fact that I'm here and that my family's healthy. So, all right. In the sewing section today, we have... Um, Three things that I am, uh, two things I'm working on, one that I'm going to work on, but take some initiative on, and then um, some projects that I have projected that I will be doing. So, um, the first is a crochet uh, sewing crossover, so I'm going to go ahead and do it, but it's the blanket. If you watch the crochet one, you know, in the crochet, I'm calling them sections, okay? Don't know why, it just kind of, so... In this, the crochet podcast section, I told you that I was doing this blanket and I'm going to back it. Um, I think I'm just, the sewing part is going to come because I'm going to whip stat, whip stitch this on with yarn and then put my stitches in there. Um, I lost my nail as it, it was... It was just the way my granny had taught me to um, attach things, and she had a special nail, and it, she may have sharpened it. I don't know, but the nail that I have isn't making the holes. Like, you take a nail, and you put it through, and then you crochet through it, and make your hole and crochet through it, and you just do a single crochet through them. Well, the problem is, is I can't find that nail, and the substitutes are acting very poorly. So I can't get it to do. So I thought if I took, um, and you, I don't know if you can see, I did it right here with regular thread. And I think I can get them consistent enough that it'll look okay by going in each hole. Um, and I'm just going to whip stitch it on with yarn and then attach the um, stitches to the yarn whip stitch so that I can put the trim on. So... Yeah, still fighting with this. Um, haven't been fighting long, so, um, and I will figure it out. Uh, I also could take and sew on a piece of yarn. You can do it with your sewing machine, zigzag over it onto the back, and then put my stitches on there. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, I don't know. <laughs> you like that? Just don't know. But you can zigzag stitch on a piece of yarn. You put the piece of yarn down and you zigzag over it. And then you can crochet between the yarn and that. But a lot of those that I've seen done pull away. Um, I just have never done it myself. So I probably, I'm not leaning towards that. So, um, but there is that sewing project. And I am working to get that one done in the next week or so. I want that one done and out of here. <laughs> it is the last holdover um, from last year. So it is the last crochet project, holdover, all that. So um, the next thing that I worked on, and it does not look like I worked on it, but I did. And I'll tell you why. Um, so I'm working on my skirt. I did it to make it very loose, but because it's two layers, it made, when I put it on, it makes me look even heavier than I am. Okay. So it gives me no waste, no anything. So I took the bulk. First thing I did was use a different, um, elastic. I moved up to a one and a half inch, you know, elastic. And then while I left this very, big and loose. Um, I trimmed down the skirt to actually fit my waist size. So this is the inner lining and it is made to fit me. And then this part is, um, left loose. Um, I haven't decided how loose. I kind of like it snug like this, but I don't know how it's going to look on me 
on that. Does that make sense? So I haven't tried this on like done like this. So yeah, it is what it is. Um, but I'm also going to, when I get both of these on here, I'm going to trim across here. I'm going to stitch across here so that um, everything stays in place. Uh, so I worked on that. The other issue with this, and I don't know, I've tried several times to just position the camera to pick it up. But when I was ironing this, um, and you can't see it in the camera at all. Dang it. So when I was ironing this and I hit my steam button, every once in a while, there's one right here. Let's see if I can show you. Every once in a while, you know, and see with my hand there, it goes away. But I can see it. Um, well, can you see that right there? See how it's darker? The steam, when I do my steam to press my material, it left moisture and that moisture created splotches on this. Now, can everybody see them? <laughs> Doesn't matter. I can see them. They, they are driving me crazy. So I'm going to make it and then I'm going to wash it and see if whatever that is comes out. I don't know even know why. This is the first time I've ever had that happen. Um, I don't know if it's my iron. My iron isn't very old. Um, I dropped my old iron and had to replace it. So I'm not sure if <sighs> I'm not sure. It's not that old. It shouldn't be dirty or anything. And so yeah, I, I don't know why it did that. But I am going to go ahead and finish it and then wash it up. Um, I do have this side seamed. I don't have the other and I don't have the top seam. Um, but for the most part, I have the design in place. So it's just a matter of going back and deciding again um, if I want to leave some kind of V and leave that pink showing through there or if I want to um, just have it covered like so. I don't know, but it'll get there. It'll get there. And I've been working a little bit on it each week. So that is a good thing. But I did rip up the entire thing and start over this weekend when I realized that it made my non-existent waist look even bigger. I was like, no, not happening. So the last thing that I did, I have to come over here to get it. Ugh. All right. So I have made carpet bags out of upholstery um, samples for literally years. So I went through and in order to um, hit my goal, one of my sewing goals is to use up my material or get rid of it. it, it and when I say get rid of it, I mean give it to another friend for quilting or whatever. Um, I don't plan on having big stashes when I move into my tiny home. So I will have a small, and I have looked and I have totes in mind, one for yarn, one for fiber, and one for material. And that is all the stash that I'm going to have. It will be hidden under my bed. And I'm actually thinking that I might use one big tote and do thirds of it because they're about the same size. And I've already got the big tote. And I think the big totes would be easier to, to roll in and out um, from underneath the bed. So if you follow the, the whole tiny house thing, you know that underneath my bed is a big storage. It's literally a wooden base, no box spring. And then uh, a uh, mattress. So anyway, back to this. I don't plan on having a stash. The material that we talked about for that uh, little blanket that I'm making, it also came out of my stash. Now, I should, probably should back up and tell you. So it wasn't wide enough and it wasn't quite long enough. So um, I did have to splice in right here is a seam. I know you, I don't even, man, I've always struggled with 
with show and crochet. Now I'm struggling with showing stitches on my sewing. Um, right there, right there. I don't know if you can see that. It's it's a strip about this long. It goes all the way down the side, and then there's a strip about this long. It goes all the way across the bottom. And um, yeah. So I actually had this material in my stash. So I guess I should call this stash buster or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I should call it. But the material for this came out of it. Um, and that used up material stash. And then, of course, back to these. So I have made these for years. And I think I started out with about 30 this year. And I have three left. Um, I give them away. And um, I it, they go on there. I've called them so many things, Bible bags, study bags, um, treasure bags for children, uh, whatever they need. Um, I have seemed to, yeah. So they're just canvas bags that I make. But I took the time, and we're not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to show you a few. Uh, and I paired them up. And I think I had four pieces left that didn't match and just could not be matched with anything. Um, and these colors aren't showing great, but it is what it is. Um, but so, yeah, this is, that's actually a cream color. And then I've got some really, some are more attractive to me than others. Um, some are not, uh, but they're all upholstery, and I think I counted in here 53 of these. So my goal is very obtainable because I could do one a week and get this done in this year. So that, you know, when I've got the floor and all that in the tiny house, I don't have this to take with me. So, uh, I did pair them all up and some are some are thick upholstery some this one is more like a cotton upholstery and it's you know and it's really cute some of them came out really cute but I am going to start and I am going to hopefully this weekend I want to have all of those cut so the way that I do them these pieces, I've never measured them. I don't know what size they are. They're the old fashioned standard upholstery um, sample. And the one that is going to be the bottoms and the handles, I cut in half for the bottom and then I use the other half and cut it in half for the handles. The main one that is the sides is cut in half only. So, um, I plan on doing that. Then I just French seam them together where they join and then seam up the side. And, uh, yeah, they're super, super simple. So I don't know this weekend. Like I said, I plan on getting all of them cut so that I have them up all ready to sew. And then I don't know if I'm when I say I'm going to do one a week, I, I want to try and do them assembly line so that I'm doing all the handles, you know, just seaming down. If I cut them all and then I sew all the handles, then I sew. So they'll come together pretty quickly and I will be able to use those to give away this year. Um, hospital bags is another thing that I've, you know, if somebody's getting ready for surgery, um, travel bags. I gave one away this year. It's called it a travel bag. She travels to and from her um, parents' house in Illinois on a regular basis, and she can put the stuff she needs right there in the bag at her feet. Totally washable, good canvas bag. So, anyway, um, I'm going to make those. I don't know that I'm going to get one done a week. The goal is to have one done a week. But if I'm doing them assembly line, style if I get them all cut the first week and then I get all the handles so in the, first, the second week then you know I don't know then I may just put them all put 
four or five together to catch up on my weeks because this week I haven't done anything but match them. So I'm already a week behind. But if I'm doing them assembly style, they should pop all out of them. So yeah. that is a goal for this year. The other thing that I'm going to discuss in this podcast is that um, I know this podcast isn't a whole lot of sewing being discussed, uh, being shown, but this is the first of the year. So we're going to talk about my goals. Um, the other things, I have two other things that, um, and one to me is a huge thing. Um, so I am going to make the kids stockings. Um, if you watch the crochet section, you know that we got some toys on sale for Christmas next year on Christmas Day. So we had Christmas on Christmas Eve. And then on Christmas Day, we were sitting around and we were just kind of hanging out. And my little app popped up and said they had some really good deals. I checked it out. I ended up getting... Um, hundred and thirty dollar, a hundred and fifty dollar, uh, toys for thirty nine ninety nine. So for forty bucks, I got my kids some remote controlled type electronic toys that are kind of old fashioned. They're I remember having knockout as a kid, but you had to push the little thing and it went, nit, nit, nit. and now it's a robot that nit, 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 and you remote control them and RJ's is cars. So anyway, to go along with that. I am going to make satin stockings for them. Um, nice satin stockings. Uh, that way they can put their name. I don't think I'm going to do a name on each one. I'm just going to do them in their favorite color, which means I'm doing blue, red, pink, and purple. So, um, but I am going to do those. And then I think I'm going to do roommate one. Um, I got the idea this year for our day. He was with me and he had helped me grocery shop for Christmas dinner. It's kind of become a tradition, but he goes and helps me get the Christmas meal shopping done. And I pick him up some groceries because about that time of year, he's getting tight. So um, it's just the last two years, it seems like it's been that way. So we're calling it a tradition. Not that we planned it or anything or that it's, you know, but RJ shopped with me for Thanksgiving again this year, and he shopped with me for Christmas dinner. And while he was there, he was saying that he didn't have anything, you know, for everybody. And I said, well, you know, I'm kind of going for that old-fashioned Christmas feel. I wrap things in tissue paper. I wrap it. It, it looks so 70s from, like, when I was a child underneath our tree. It was funny. Okay? But, so... <laughs> I told him, I said, I'm going for kind of that old fashioned Christmas. So why don't we go over to the area, the Christmas area and see if they got any of those little felt stockings. And I said, and we'll do something with them. And he goes, okay. All right. He goes, fine. So we go over there and of course they're on sale for like 68 cents. They're 98 cents to start with. Not a big deal. So I pick up four of those and then I look at our desk. So what do you want in them? And I said, what are you going to put? I said, you have to do one for yourself. You can't just do for, you know, three. I said, that's not the way this works. And he goes, okay, okay. And he knew what I was doing because we've always talked about if we do something together, it's him and I making a memory to be Santa Claus. So, um, anyway, it's just our little way of dealing with tough times during the Christmas. So we've always done it. And... It's all about making memories. I will always remember this Christmas as the one that RJ and I did stockings. So anyway, so he was there and he's like, okay. I said, now you need to go down this aisle. And I said, see what you can see. I said, make it Santa Claus ish. And he goes, I can do that. And he said, okay. And I said, remember Santa doesn't do a lot of chocolate. I said, he's more of a peppermint guy. And I said, hard candies, that kind of stuff. So he goes down and him and I shopped together and, and, um, he went one way and I went the other and we met in the middle and we only matched on one thing. So we put four back because we've gotten four of the one 
and it was Kinder Eggs. So him and I both were like Kinder Eggs and he found um, Christmas tree peeps. He was like, look. So he got four little packages that had like three in them. And uh, we got, what else did we get? A bunch of hard candy. I found a bag of little chocolate balls and we put those in there. Um, each one, when we were done, we had, you know, candy to go in there. Um, everybody had like a chocolate candy bar. Uh, one was a hundred grand, but it was done in bills. You know, it looked like money. It was wrapped to look like money. Let me rephrase that. Um, then they had the gold coin candies. Um, I looked for the lifesaver books that I used to get the kids. They're not really lifesavers. They just have rolls of candy in them that are fake uh, lifesaver ones. I, I don't know. They were they were hard candies, and they didn't have the hole through the center, but they were a roll of hard candy, and there was like three or four of them. And what it was is we could put some up, and each kid could get a roll, you know, and it made the candy last. Instead of just having lots of little pieces, they'd get a roll of candy, you know, and we'd separate them out by days. And that book would last because it had like five on this side and five on that side. It would last well up into February before Valentine's Day. So, yeah. Anyway, him and I did those as a Christmas memory. And then I added um, switches and coal to everybody's uh, stocking. And I simply took a permanent marker and made their initial on it, R, M, T, and B. And so, yeah, we did that. And then this year I'm going to make the satin ones and RJ will probably help me fill them and they will go a little bit more. Um, I looked at apples and oranges this year and was going to do that. And the fruit was horrible. I couldn't find decent oranges, half of them were green or really small. I want decent size oranges to go in my kid's Christmas stocking. I don't know why. But it's got to have an orange and an apple, and then it'll have, you know, some candies. And I'm going to find some little play toys, um, little dollar stocking stuffer things to go in them. So the whole gift is RJ and I going to find those little things to go in the stocking. And I am going to hand sew them. Okay. Oh, I'm going to sew, sew them on my machine, but I mean hand make them. So um, I already have taken and traced... One of the things that I do a lot for sewing projects is I make my own patterns. So I have some brown paper. I don't even know where it went, but I do have it. I think it's in the crochet basket. Go figure, right? Only in my house does the sewing pattern end up in the crochet basket. Uh, so, but if you watch the crochet thing, you'll know why, because I got that book and I think it's in that book. Um, so I have the patterns already made and I know what I'm doing there. I just have to to get them and I know um, how I'm going to back them and everything. Um, I'm going to only use one layer to make the stocking part and I'm going to French seam it around. I love French seam in case you have not noticed. I love French seam. Okay. Um, if you don't know what that is, you put the wrong sides together and you seam it. Then you turn it inside out. And you seam it <coughs> just past your seam allowance so that all your frays and everything are inside. Okay. So I'm thinking, what can I show you that's French seamed? Oh, I have these. Okay. So I use a French seam on these bags. Let me grab it. Hopefully one that, um, and I don't use it on every side, but I love, it looks like this on the inside. And that on the outside. So, oops. So you would start and get one that's not put together. So you'd actually oops, start with it looking the shape you want it. Okay. So you would seam here and say seam down this, and then you would flip this over and. I always press a French seam. I don't know why. Okay. Then when you flip it over, you've got this and you're seaming along this. So this is what shows up on the inside of your bag. 
and all of those edges that would fray or whatever are on the inside and unseen. So it comes out, like I said, it looks like a normal seam on the outside. Okay. Every once in a while you'll get one of these fray things that comes through. You just snip it off. Okay. But it looks like this on the outside and it looks very clean and done on the inside. So this is, uh, this is, um, what the inside seam looks like. And I'm going to do that with the stockings and then make them one layer and with the French seam on the edges. And then I'm going to take the top and I'm going to do, it'll be a two piece, put the wrong sides together, stitch around, and then I'm going to put it over the top and then so, yeah, I'm not making much sense, but I've got it in my head, and it will come out very clean looking, and that is one thing about my sewing is I always, I don't like the fray to show, or I want it to look, I want the seams to look professional. No matter how bad I mess up the, the pattern, or it doesn't lay flat, or it doesn't, I want those seams to look professional. Uh, I want them to look very nice and clean. So... Yeah. Anyway, so I'm making the stockings and then the final thing that I am going to do this year in the sewing department, and this one includes my daughter, is she has asked me to teach her to sew. She has an old sewing machine and I told her, I said, let's learn to sew on a regular sewing machine first, then you transfer it to the old antique kind and it just that you have to be able to understand the mechanics of it and the tension and an old machine doesn't always have the same tension controls. And so I call them a little bit more finicky. I have an old sewing machine right now. I just use it as a table for my new sewing machine. I have two um, sewing machines, um, modern day. Um, the reason I don't use the older one is it is very finicky and, you, and to get the tension straight tight, like you need it, it just uh, takes me forever. So anyway, um, she wants to learn to sew and she wants to learn to sew on her antique machine. I told her I would show her on the antique machine once she mastered it on a regular machine. So um, we are going to make her and I together the reusable dryer sheets. I haven't made them since RJ was a little bitty. I haven't seen it as a fad on, um, like Instagram, not Instagram, um, Pinterest is the word I'm looking for. I haven't seen it on there a lot. I haven't seen it. So it's something that is super easy that she can learn to sew and it makes a nice gift. So she is saving cute jars. We're going to go look for some jars, um, and then it's just cherry cloth and flannel. And I might actually have some flannel. Um, cherry cloth I normally get as used towels um, from like Goodwill and that. So, yeah, they're super easy to do. And you guys can follow along with that when we get them and do them. So, but the first goal is to get the bags done and get all of that out of my stash get the blanket done and get that out of my stash. And this is more spring light. So it will be done in a couple of weeks. The weather here is starting to turn cold again. The first part of February is always the worst. And I know this because it's my birthday. Just saying every birthday, uh, it doesn't matter what's going on. There will be snow or ice or deadening wind, or it is always super cold and we don't go out and do anything. So it's fine. Um, the other thing that, and the final thing that I was going to talk about on this is we are up one from last time I podcast, which was the crochet, crochet, the crochet section. Um, so we are still five away from hitting 2000 subscribers. I don't care um, we've been doing this long enough and people are like, well, you haven't grown your channel. I haven't concentrated on this channel. 
Um, this, there is an elite crew and you know who you are that watches faithfully every week, every podcast. I bet you they know more about us than they care to because I babble about my personal life too. So, um, yeah, they have followed us a long time and that's the elite crew that this was made for. Um, back when RJ was blogging. Um, there were some ladies who it was hard for them to read it, but they liked to put us on and play us. So we would cover one week's worth of blogs in the podcast. And that's how it started out. Um, and then it just kind of developed from there, but I haven't practiced growing it or anything like that. It's not, um, when people say it's not about the money, it is. They are all monetized just because we have a chance to make a little bit. Am I getting rich? Am I getting enough to sustain? No. I think last year we got 200 bucks the entire year off of YouTube. So, yeah, it's nice. And RJ appreciates it. He says God always makes it fall when he needs it. So, um, yeah, it. It's a little bit of money, but that's not what it's about. This is a record of my life, and it started when RJ was little, and it's been going for a long time, and I plan on keeping it going just because I enjoy doing it. Um, it gives me, I don't know, kind of purpose, not really, but it's just my thing, and I will continue to do it. So, 100, or 1,995 subscribers. And when we hit that 2000, I have some yarn and I am contemplating a couple of patterns. So, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I have them. I just don't know if that's, I don't know if I want it to be a pattern that I've done or a pattern that, you know, is somebody else's. That's the thing is, is it a pattern I've created or is it someone else's? So, um, if it's a pattern of mine, then I'm gonna have to get it from here onto a sheet of paper so that somebody else can understand. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, I may just do one that I already have and give you all a pattern. So we'll see. Uh, when we hit 2000, we will do some kind of little contest. Um, you'll have to comment or something, um, and go from there. But even though I'm giving away yarn and it's originally a crochet, uh, giveaway, both, there will be one giveaway little clip. And I've decided that that's the one I'm gonna have everybody comment on. So I don't have to, um, look everywhere else. Okay. Uh, so when we hit 2000, I will make a little giveaway clip and that way you don't have, and it'll say, you know, giveaway entry or something like that to keep it simple. All right. I'm going to have to get off here and get ready for work. I will talk to y'all next week and I'll see you in the crochet, crochet section. Bye. Thanks for watching.